AJ Gowan, and I go by Akbots on Instagram and YouTube. This video today is going to be about the Polini Thor 303 and the Polini Thor 202. I've made a video about this in the past where I'm flying around talking about it, but I wanted to do an updated version, uh, and also I wanted to do this all in post so that I could make sure I cover all the key points and uh, give you updated information. Okay, so the first question is, is who is this motor for? And I'm going to start with a 303. First, I'll say, let's start with tandem pilots. It's going to be a great motor for tandem pilots, and specifically trike tandem. Next would be really large guys flying trikes. And when I say that, we're talking 260 pounds and above. It'll be great for you. Third would be really advanced pilots flying really hot gliders, such as free ride, vipers, warps, things of that nature. Um, and even more specifically to that, if you're under 220 pounds, a 303 is not really practical for you. It's not really needed. You could get away with something like a Thor 202 or a Moster Factory R. Um, let's talk about the Thor 202. Who is that motor for? That motor is going to be for very similar. Um, maybe someone doing foot launch tandems and trike tandems. It's definitely better than a Moster 185, which I do not even like to do tandems on at all anymore. And it's definitely going to be more power than a Moster 185, quite a bit. I would say realistically 30% more power um, once it's running perfectly. It's going to be for larger guys that just want more power, but more importantly, more reliability. Personally, I had a lot of problems with different Mosters. I've, I've blown basically six spark plugs out of six heads on Moster 185s, and that's a whole controversy in and of itself where people are saying I'm doing stuff wrong, but bottom line is, is I just get them too hot and then they cool down too quickly. And it, the heat cycles just destroy the heads. So for me, they're not practical. I want liquid cooled just for the reliability of how I fly parameters. So let's talk about the weight of the 202 and the 303 compared to a 185. I don't have actual weights of just the motor. I never actually weighed it, but I do have weights of my setups that were all very, very similar. So I have all up weight measurements here. So keep in mind, this has six to seven liters of fuel, reserves, power floats, strobes, everything, as I would fly it. If I was going to launch for, let's say, an hour and a half cross country, this is going to be the setup that I would fly, and it's all up weight. So let's start off for a base with a Moster 185 on a Fly Products frame with all the equipment that I listed earlier, and that was going to be right at about 72 pounds. So fuel, reserve, power floats, everything, 72 pounds with the Moster 185. For a Thor 202 with all the exact same equipment and exact same frame, we're looking at about 90 pounds. And then the Thor 303 was about 94 pounds. All right, so now let's talk about the Moster power, the factory R power, 202, 250, and 303. That's about the how I would list them. I would start with the Moster. You can go to the factory R and you're definitely going to get more power, but at a significant price increase. Uh, I don't know the reliability, but I was luckily able to fly the factory R of Tucker's. Of course, it only had the 130 prop on. I did not get a chance to fly it with the 140 prop, which is supposedly quite a bit more power. The 202 with a 140 prop is dramatically more than the factory R when it's tuned correctly. And I'm going to get more into what I mean by tuned correctly later because it did take me a little while to get the 202 and 303 tuned just right to where it's producing optimal power. The 202 needs a 140 prop for it to, to produce the power that you want. Uh, a 130 prop that it comes with is not that great. It's not even super efficient. Uh, I was not a fan of the stock prop of the 202, but the power is definitely more, but more importantly for me was the reliability, which I'm going to cover later. Then you've got the Thor 250, which is significantly more than the 202, but not crazy. Um, it's kind of about what you would expect. And then the 303, which is, to me is almost astronomical. I can literally power loop my Polini Thor 303. Uh, tons of power. And what's even better is the reliability and the fuel efficiency. So with the fuel efficiency and the power is where it blew my mind the most. The 303 just produces so much power. 
um, it's like flying with cheat codes once you're in the air. The cool part is going along with that is I literally burn half the fuel of a Mooster. So I'm burning about six to seven liters per hour on a Mooster 185, and I'm burning 2.8 liters per hour on a 303. Now the 202, I burned about 4.5 liters per hour, and all these are under the same flying conditions. There are various frames that will support the 202 and 303 motor. One of those frames is the Liberty Perimeter, which I fly. I personally am a huge fan of this frame. There are various different types of Liberty Perimeters. The one I have here specifically is the Slalom Racing Flame, which has a 154 hoop, a 154 centimeter hoop, and I have a 140 E-prop on here. So I have a lot of clearance for safety-wise for my prop to the hoop. Not only is it just in total diameter, but also in uh, my prop being very close to the, the hoop, meaning my motor sits very close to my back, which also makes the motor feel lighter. In fact, my 303 on the Liberty Paramotor feels much lighter than my 202 did on the Fly Products frame. Even though the Fly Products is lighter, it felt much heavier than my 303 because of how far it set off the back. For me, that was also a safety concern because the hoop that I had was a single hoop and it was a 150 hoop which is 10 centimeters bigger however my prop was so far away from that center single hoop that it was a safety concern that my lines would get wrapped up into the prop if I turned even just the slightest amount which would therefore pull my arm into the prop so in my opinion it's very important to only run the prop that fits your hoop size for the reason of lines getting into your prop and pulling your hand into the prop on inflation frames that I've flown these motors on is the Fly Products and the Liberty Paramotor. I'm personally more a fan of the Liberty Paramotor. I feel like the torque compensation uh, adjustability is better. And so you can then put into the frame more torque compensation. You can also change the angle of which the frame flies. That's more for slalom style flying, which, um, which makes you fly at a faster airspeed based on where you put those arm positions. Uh, not necessary for most people, but I do like that adjustability. The other cool thing about the Liberty paramotor frame is that you can put all different types of motors on there without having to buy any extra pieces. So this frame can run an Adam 80, a Moster, a 202, a Sky Engines, Boxer 220, pretty much anything on this one single motor mounting plate. So let's talk about the things that I do like about the Thor 202 and the Thor 303. For me, honestly, the biggest thing is the power and reliability. I don't normally care about fuel efficiency, but in this case, I do like it because it makes it overall lighter. I can carry less fuel and get to fly for longer. So that's why I do like the fuel efficiency. But in general, I could have cared less. It could have burned 10 liters per hour and I would have been totally fine with that. Most of my flying is less than 30 minutes anyway. So for me, I didn't really care. But the power alone is just astronomical on the 303. The 202, it's very manageable and great. I do like it. It's it's what you would want out of a, you know, say you've been flying a Moster and you want more power. The 202 is that great middle ground. It's about the power that you want. The 303 for flying solo, honestly, it's a bit, I would say almost too much, but I use it all. I like it all, especially for power on aerobatics. One of the other things I like is that when I make adjustments to the carburetor, you can tell a difference instantly. And it's a measurable adjustment because you're using jets and needle clip positions. So I do like that whenever I change a jet, I can immediately tell a difference. Uh, that could also go into a thing that I dislike about the motor as well, that I have to tune it every once in a while. Once you get it tuned though, it's pretty good unless you have a super high density altitude day or you are going to higher elevations. But in general, once you get it tuned relatively close, it runs pretty good. You don't have to move the adjustment needles or any of that stuff very much. You don't have to change the jets very much. But the motors do need some adjustment from the factory. They seem to come very rich from the factory. Even though I'm at 127 foot elevation, uh, you know, above sea level, I've had to lean them considerably, both the 303 and the 202. Now, once I change that main jet and drop the, the main needle a little bit, they run absolutely fantastic. Thing, the other thing that I don't like is the weight. Growing up in construction, I would tell my customers, you get to choose two out of three. You can choose quality, price, and speed. You only get two, though. You can't have all three. 
Uh, that's kind of the same when you're choosing a motor. You got to give up something, right? And so for me, the weight is totally fine. It's totally acceptable. Obviously, I'm a bigger guy, so it doesn't bother me as much. But the reliability, the power, and, and the efficiency are just totally worth the weight. But if I had something to complain about, it would be weight. And it would be that you have to adjust the carb from the factory, potentially. And I guess my last complaint would be the throttle selection. I've never been a fan of Pliny throttles personally. I do like them better than some of the other throttles, especially a Vitarazzi throttle. I can That's the worst throttle on the market, in my opinion. Um, and Pelinis, I've kind of got to where I modify them, and I actually I, I don't mind them now. I actually almost enjoy them. But that's not my complaint about the throttle. My complaint about the throttle is how the throttle connects into the carburetor. This is actually a slide carb now. So it's not like a moisture where you've got the little lever and then the throttle comes through and then you just put a little set screw on the end of it. It's exactly the reverse side of that. So in this case, you have to have the little lead ball on the end of the line going into your slide carb to pull the slide card up. So that very, so that limits your options on throttles. Now I've modified an air conception throttle to make it work and it's taken a little bit of work probably a couple of hours of work but man it was totally worth it my throttle now is great but even still that's not my complaint my complaint is is that it's very easy to actually pull the throttle cable and therefore increase the rpms now i've got a workaround where i've zip tied the throttle in certain sections to where it's very hard to pull the throttle cable to let this happen but i wish they would come out with the throttle cable that would actually thread into the carburetor that would not allow this to happen um, in my opinion, this is a safety concern, and I've actually had this happen where the throttle cable got pulled out of the little rubber boot on my 202 and locked me into about 80 or 90 percent power when I started the motor up. And the motor started, and of course, that was the day that my throttle cable or my uh, kill switch had broke, and I was locked into 80 percent power on my 202, which is a handful to hold back. In fact, I was barely able to hold it back. And luckily I had two people to come and help run up next to me and help hold me up and kill the motor. I feel like for getting onto the last section of this video is add-ons. Uh, I feel like I could make an off-grid aviation throttle work pretty easy as well. I do like that throttle. I've seen some in person. I haven't got to fly with them personally, but I do like it. And the air conception throttle, which I have made work. So those throttles, I'm pretty sure I can easily modify. But as of right now, the only throttle that I know works on these is the Pelini without modification. So two more important add-ons. One is this uh, Pelini tachometer. It's also a Hobbs meter, a cooling head temperature, and a gut exhaust gas temperature meter. So it does all four of those. I only use it for the cooling head temperature, tachometer, and Hobbs meter. Um, once I've finished flying all the different wings and different configurations with speed bar and everything, uh, I'm probably going to mount it back onto the frame and I won't use it anymore. But right now I'm trying to monitor everything, making sure it's not getting too hot, RPMs aren't getting too high, and stuff like that. Uh, I've also added a remote choke and for the 303 I think it's really important um, just because I have to remote choke this thing to start it and I don't want to kill the motor to go back and turn it off. Um, I can only start the 303 with the choke on most of the time. The 202 is super easy. I can one-handed pull start that thing without a choke but this one I need to have a choke on. I do have this 303 now where I can start it within one pull or two pulls no matter the configuration. I just prime the crap out of it and then just pull it and it starts right up. You can purchase a 28 millimeter smart carb, which is called the SC2 smart carb. It's $550. I've heard really great reviews about these. I don't think that they're necessary, but supposedly they do uh, produce 10% more power, about 25 to 30% more uh, fuel economy, which at 2.8 liters per hour is gonna be dramatic. Like, wow, that's incredible if that's true. It's also supposed to be a little bit more linear of a throttle response and a little bit more crisp. Uh, also, there's no jets as it's a single cir circuit design, so a little bit easier to tune. Here's the remote choke. It goes here. This is an add-on piece. This is your idle adjustment, and this is your low-end screw. This only adjusts about the first 15% of the throttle range, so obviously loosening it is going to be richening it and then tightening it is going to be leaning it this is how you would drain your float ball here you would loosen this pull this hose and you could drain your football 
and then you can unscrew this and you have your main jet inside of there. To change your needle, you need to remove this air box and then pull these two Phillips head screwdrivers off. Your entire slide will then come out and you'll have a needle in there to adjust. You'll have to remove the cap, finagle your throttle adjustment and then uh, you can change your clip height, your e-clip height of the actual needle. I have changed the ignition cap and this does a better job getting more contact with the spark plug. I've had issues with the stock ignition cap. Your gearbox reduction, which has on this one a 2.8 reduction. The other version is a 3.2 version, which is for a larger 150 or 156 centimeter prop. This setup allows for quick detach. These move in and out by changing um, these four screws here. So you can move them in and out and you can also move this up and down. And that's gonna change the angle of attack. It can push your more motor forward when you hit power to therefore force your glider to fat, fly at a faster airspeed. Our varying length soft links. This is the small version, which keeps the carabiner as close to the arm as possible and not moving around too much, which I prefer. You've got three adjustments with this. So a hole here, a hole here, and a hole here. Uh, I find the middle is great for me with the 303. And then you can adjust these bolts uh, and the arm back and forth for more uh, smaller adjustments. All right. This is the Dudek uh, Power Seat Light Harness, which is 4.4 pounds lighter than the Dudek Comfort Seat. The uh, main differences are going to be like your strapping, um, and basically that's it. The back is not quite as um, padded, which honestly I prefer. I am very comfortable in this. And then the other difference is going to be your seatboard adjustment is down here as opposed to up here, which I prefer. I kind of like this setup a little bit better. Um, you can actually adjust this in flight or while it's on your back as opposed to the, the normal way. The other cool addition to this new harness is it has a magnetic um, speed bar keeper, which I love. This is great. So much better than that stupid Velcro. And uh, I typically use extra Velcro to keep it all attached. Obviously it comes with a side pocket and your reserve pouch. And I've got a 140 reserve, which is honestly a little, I'm a little too small for me. I wish they had a 160 reserve. That'd be better for me.